how do your ancestors help support your well-being? Back in the day, many of you may know now the word Reiki, but back then people thought that if you did Reiki, it was like you're a weirdo wacko, you know, off to the side. So I was doing my Reiki training and um, I shared with my mom and she didn't know what to do with it. It was like she really put me down about it and it was really hard for me because that was such it's such a heal for those of you who don't know it's, it's basically taking care of your energy you know it's, it's very healing and helpful and um it's out of love and light so years go by and then she um you know i just i guess it started becoming more acceptable and mainstream and uh um eventually i started getting into herbs as well and just understanding herbs and like their healing properties and then, then one day out of nowhere, and I don't know anything, her mother died when she was 14. Um, and so again, like, I don't know, really, I've never seen her. There's no pictures. So I was just sharing with the group. I think there's one picture that she won't let anybody even touch, um, but, or make copies of it either. So very, very private. So I feel very disconnected in that way. But then the one day out, out of nowhere, she's just like, she's like, you know, that your abuela, that's how you say grandmother in Spanish, you know, your abuelita, you know, people came from all over to talk to her. She was like the healer of the town. And um, it just like, I just woke something in me. I was like such the validation that I needed um, because I thought there was something wrong with me that my mother was like, just rejecting me. You know, she was literally like putting me down. And even though my mother's never said this, I understand now why um, she was trying to dissuade me from doing this work because um, she was just trying to protect me, you know, because she had been, there's been so much stuff that she's tried to, to make her way on her own here. So <clears throat> she just didn't want that for me. So I feel like myself, it's all, there's been a lot of, um, you know, being the voice of the voiceless for my family. And I feel like, um, even though I don't know my relatives, like know them, know them. And I visited Chile once years ago and, um, and I met some of my relatives, which is great. And I'll share that picture later at this time. But um, I just feel like now that's the work I'm supposed to be doing is being a healer. Connecting with my, with my grandfather in particular, who has long since passed, has helped me really live my values without apology. Um, he was very... Um, justice oriented, which I think, um, wound up, um, painting him as somebody who was very angry or somebody who had a quote unquote chip on his shoulder about his own childhood and about kind of systemic injustice, um, against Latin folks, you know, where we thought that because he was angry about it, you know, we often wrote him off and just said, Oh, you know, that doesn't happen anymore. Um, get over it kind of, uh, kind of attitude, which, which I really, really regret now, but, um, um, you know, as he passed and since, um, my grandmother has also passed, I inherited a lot of his books, a lot of his pictures, um, saw, you know, um, parts of his life that were important to him, um, that then looking back on my own life realized, um, that a lot of my anger and injustice actually that was also poo pooed as like just you know something that um oh she's disgruntled oh she can't like let stuff go um you know really came from him and it helped me embrace um you know the path that I actually, I've actually chosen in life which which is um you know social justice but more for for women's rights which is which is what led, has led me to my career and um you know, I it always just kind of felt like the odd one out before I really connected with that part of him um, and realized that that no, we we um, connect on all kinds of issues that are important, and, and anger is actually a really um, valuable thing to tell you what your um, what's wrong in the world that should be better and that should be stood up for in in this life. Um, and had he probably had a, an, a you know the the privilege of an a, a education. Um, he might have been able to channel things a little bit differently. Um, and so and now I feel like I'm carrying on his legacy in a way that he never got to really do. And um, that's absolutely amazing for my mental health and wellness. So I feel like I'm connecting with my family now in a way that I never like my living family um, because of my exploration 
and like learning about my ancestors and it's so rewarding um like my cousin was my cousin Rhonda was telling me all about my papa and like she knew her and like how loving and like warm and generous she was with her time and her love and it was just like hearing that made me feel just so like I felt like encapsulated like with warmth and love from her from this person I didn't know just from hearing it from my cousin but also being able to connect with Rhonda on in a way that like we've always I've always loved her but like having this this new understanding of her is really special um and just like talking about it is helping me kind of like tap into my creativity i'm writing a play about it like it all is yeah it's coming it's and you know the play is uh, messes with my head a lot of the time um but it's it's like oh it's helping me uh I'm trying to let it help me come into myself more. And I really like the idea of like accessing these, this, these ancestors or like having, knowing that they're on your team and having them as a support system, because I'm going through like a really rough time right now. So that like, I, I like just being in this space and hearing that um, and maybe taking it with me.